Good afternoon, and welcome to our webinar, Building a Guiding Coalition for Next Generation Supply Chain Thinking. I'm your host, Allison Crawford. Many supply chains operate without understanding all that is happening in their organizations. It's time you got the whole picture about your organization. Today, we're going to present a new online course that aligns people, process, and technology to seize the opportunity of next generation supply chain thinking through a partnership between Ch Supply Chain Insights and CorpU. Before I hand this over to Laura and the rest of the panel, there are a few things I want to cover with you. First, we're recording today's session and we'll post it to our on-demand webinar page. You can visit our website to listen to this or any of our other webinars. Additionally, we'll send out the slides to all the attendees within 24 hours of the conclusion of the presentation. We encourage you to share these slides with others in your organization, and if you have questions, reach out to Laura or myself to set up a discussion. We also want to hear your questions about this program. Please post to the Q&A or chat function to the left of your screen. We've left time at the end of the webinar to address all of your questions. Finally, we will be live tweeting the webinar. So if you'd like to join in the social media conversation, you can use the hashtag SCIWebinar or the Twitter handle at SCI Insights LLC during the event. Now let me introduce your speakers. Today we're joined by Scott Winstead, Supply Chain Improvement Director, Industrial Solutions Business at Dow Chemical. Scott has spent 30 years in various supply chain and logistics roles across corporate, consulting, and military in multiple businesses. Before joining Dow in 2007, Scott, served, uh, in, uh, Scott was in various supply chain logistics leadership roles at Honeywell, Anderson Consulting Accenture, Mazda of North America, Westinghouse, and the U.S. Marine Corps. Scott is also a Six Sigma Green Belt certified and certified in sales and operations planning at the SNOP Institute. We're also joined by Jesse Sandberg, a consultant and court expert at CorpU. He's worked in project management for several years before coming to CorpU, and he now manages the implementation and delivery of all of the next generation supply chain courses. Finally, we are joined by Laura Cesari, founder of Supply Chain Insights. As an enterprise strategist, Laura focuses on the changing face of enterprise technologies. Her research is designed for the early adopter, speaking first mover advantage. She comes to the stage with over 40 years of diverse supply chain experience. So Laura, with that introduction, there's lots to talk about today with this course, so let me hand this over to you. Well, thank you so much, Allison. We've been in the development of this program for the last year, and I can't think of two more exciting people to be joined with today than Scott, who was willing to be an early adopter and test the classes. Scott, thanks for joining us today. Can you tell the group a little bit about your experience? Sure, Laura. Um, so um, <clears throat> I've known Laura for quite some time, and um, when uh, when Laura originally approached about taking a look at this and participating in this type of class, I knew it was going to be good, but I really didn't realize in terms of, um, you know, multimedia format, uh, use of videos, case studies, benchmarks, um, you know, discussion around these cohorts, which I'm sure we'll, we'll get into more uh, discussion about that later. But one of the things that really struck me was just how innovative this is. I haven't seen anything that really addresses value chain, horizontal processes, end-to-end -end, um, like this. I'm used to more of the traditional, you know, stuff that probably all of us have, uh, have studied one time or another around supply chain education. So this was really a breath of fresh air and also spurred – spurred some real interesting dialogue between the different members of the cohort group that uh, that I went through this with. So I was yeah, really impressed. Well, thank you, Scott. And we actually had a group of ambassadors that went through the program, and now we're rolling it out. And the person who's been setting it up in the background and running it at CorpU is Jesse. So Jesse, you want to tell the group a little bit about what you do and the running of these programs? and your work on this program development? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me today, Laura. It's, been, it's a pleasure. Um, you know, what I do at CorpU is once people decide that they have a change that they want to make in the business, they have a strategy they need to roll out, they need to reach the next generation of supply chain, um, I, my team gets assigned and we, we work with them to figure out you know, what are the exact changes that we want to see in the business, 
and how can Laura's sprints help us get there? Uh, and then I, I work with my team to actually fiddle in the back end and make sure that happens smoothly. And the neat thing about the CorpU pr platform is it's extensible and we can run it for global teams. And when I was looking for a partner to really bring next generation thinking to market, I was struggling with a business problem that I think many people are struggling with is how do we really address the changing skill requirements for supply chain leadership? You know, I see a lot of different studies about the shortage of supply chain skills and everybody feels it. You know, we can't really get people at the intersection of analytics and planning and process development, but we've got this whole world in front of us that's exploding with new forms of analytics, new technologies, new processes, global talent. One of the issues we have is that we've got very established universities in North America and Europe, but the parties that I work with in South America and Asia are struggling with how do they really build teams. And Supply chain management is about 30 years old, but supply chain is defined very differently at Unilever versus Dow versus BASF. And we're still evolving in the processes, and so how do we really build these needs against changing skill requirements for the next generation supply chain talent? So these courses were developed to help. And you know, CorpU is a partner. They've got a proven interactive approach, and I've got to say I was pretty humbled when I started working with the CorpU platform you know, the ability for them to design short sprints for a week. You know, they're really experts at designing the courses. They have a video studio that allows you to have very cool short bursts of videos that are automated and animated so that it's able to capture millennials and Gen Y's approach. It's a very collaborative and scalable social platform, which, you know, I tell people it's sort of like Facebook on steroids, which allows people to really collaborate around the ideas and bring their information. And it's an easy way, I think, in short bursts to really teach difficult concepts. You know, if you think about supply chain, it's pretty heady stuff. So when I partnered with CorpU, we took all of our case studies, we took our benchmarking and uh, ideation tournaments, which allows people to ideate across global boundaries around what they see in the case studies and the benchmarking to really jump to a new level. You know, I was talking to a client the other day that said these programs allow them to leapfrog. And it's global. So Jesse is the magic person with the team behind the curtain that help us to scale globally. And it's a program of cohorts. So unlike other programs that you may have seen through APEX or CSMP that are individually focused on certification, what we're doing is we're trying to define a cohort, a group of people that are trying to learn next generation skills, and then drive that online moderation through very established facilitators at Corpio. Now at Supply Chain Insights, what we're trying to do is use our research of 6,000 respondents in our database to help mine insights to help the supply chain leader we use case studies and quantitative research on next generation processes. We actually use this data to give online benchmarking, which would allow people in cohorts, let's say comparison of Europe versus North America, or one business versus another, which allows us to reference the data and share insights on just where is the company. Every course has a maturity model and two online assessments, which allow people to really say, where am I and where do I need to go? So it's a program that allows people to build that guiding coalition with the benchmarking, the maturity models, the social interaction, the case studies. We do custom financial analysis in our Metrics That Matter class. We really take all that and we bring it to ideation tournaments. Then we do online moderation and then we actually do a final assessment to really drive unique insights. And again, it's a cohort of 30 to 50 people, and we're really trying to understand the drivers and barriers and learn from current real-life studies through an ease-of-use platform. And just to show you some examples, 
you know, this is an example of the screen. It's set up on a five-day learning sprint designed that any one person would take 30 minutes a day. People go through four days of structured learning, and then we do a live event. And so on this you can see that I'm leading this particular screen, and then you've got participants from all around the world that have their pictures and contribute in the platform. And the platform is set up so that it's largely video-based. So when we designed the classes and the maturity models, I basically took all the research to the CorpU structured learning team, and we set up for short videos. And these are animated videos so that you know, people have some excitement. And it allows people to really learn in all kinds of different ways. And then to mine that social interaction. So you can see at the bottom you have a network of who's talking to whom. And it allows us to mine the unstructured data so that we can look at what are key phrases? What are people talking about? What are the learnings? And then in our final assessments, we're able to take the benchmarking, which this is an example of supply chain team alignment. In this particular case, <clears throat> this company is not as aligned on new product development, and they are more aligned uh, you know, in some other areas. So it allows people to look at organizational alignment and compare it against the benchmarking. And here's another example. This particular company had 3% of orders that were moving hands-free against 34% of the industry average. So it shows that this particular company is not as advanced in technology automation, which really drove a discussion around what is the role of the order, what is the role of cash to cash, how do they actually leapfrog to be able to be more automated. Now in each of the classes, we also include case studies. And these are case studies that I've written on my blog, videos that we've captured at our conferences. And we use our metrics that matter approach to be able to not only tell the story, but also bring the story to life with financial data so that we can share the data, the concepts, and help people to understand what it means. Now the data is also enriched with our supply chains to admire analysis, which looks at how quickly can people drive a level of supply chain improvement, and what are the benchmarks for companies as they think about things like inventory turns, or operating margin, or EBITDA, or growth, and what's happening in different industry sectors, and how can they learn from each other. So in a nutshell, how does it work? We have seven courses that we've built now. We'll launch three next year. People determine the cohort based upon the goals and discussions. 30 to 50 in each element is a week. So each of these classes is a week. It's taken online. The course pace, however, is driven by each engagement. So one of the things a client said to me the other day is, really want to space this out because that such is so rich in terms of content. It takes a while for people to digest the material. The lessons are designed for 30 minutes a day, and it's hosted at the end with a live event that Jesse and I run. And then we share results and key ideas and discuss next steps. Now Scott, I know you've gone through this. So as a person that's gone through it, what were some of your key insights from you know, going through it as a participant? And what would you share with people that are listening about how should they think about this program? Yeah, so a uh, couple things. The, the first one, as I mentioned before, it's really, and I, I think, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where you almost have to see it, right, to, to understand it. But the, the whole idea of, you know, half an hour a day, you know, over a week and so forth, I was a little skeptical when I first started. Um, just haven't been through similar type of things in the past. But when I uh, when I first took the first course, first uh, first lesson, um, really impressed. So the the agenda there's an agenda area that's got you know basically a suggestion on number of minutes, and then uh, like I mentioned, uh, multimedia. So start off with reading an article, 
then it kind of moves to a video. So it really keeps you engaged because of the, you know, the variety of things that you're you're doing in the half an hour. Whether it's, you know, again reading a uh, a short article or listening to a video or putting uh, something in uh, on the I'm not I don't remember what the right term for it was uh, on the bulletin board for the cohort cohort group to react to. All of those were done, which I, re I, I, I really uh, appreciated the pre-work that was done to organize it because it made, my, made it very easy for me to do this each day, which I think really lends to the participation. And, you know, when you go through the first, uh, the first session, you, you feel comfort in that, okay, now I get it. We're going to move through these each day. And at the end of the live event, uh, that was great because that basically brought it all together and took some of the polling data that was collected uh, uh, each day and kind of crystallized what uh, some of the key questions were between myself and the cohort that I was part of um, and really some provocative areas that um, we had a chance to discuss. And, and Laura, you, act, you added in, you know, subject matter expert uh, um, opinions to kind of keep us uh, keep us in line, but it really um, it was a I don't want to say clever, but a really um, a, a very um, innovative way to kind of bring all this together in a short period of time across a pretty diverse chunk of our organization. If I recall, I think we had about 20 or 25 people in our cohort, and it was across uh, many of our businesses. A uh, bunch of different levels, and um, you know that's hard to do. It's it's hard to tee something like that up and then execute it within a week, where everyone felt like they've uh, learned something and contributed and expanded their 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 uh, their knowledge in some of these areas that uh, really, for the most part, the only time you see them is in a research report or in one of the trade magazines of. Um, you know what others are doing in this area. So I again, it was uh, it, what really struck me was just the um, the way it was administered. So it was easy to digest, very innovative approach, so that you could learn from multiple sources. Really enjoyed the interactivity of the cohort group, and then it kind of builded or it built to a uh, um, a finish at the end with our live event where. Um, you know, depending on what the provocative topic at, at the time was with the group, that was the one that uh, they got a lot of mileage at the end. So I, I, I thought it was really, uh, really well done. Well, thank you, Scott. And we've got a couple of questions. So Mike w wants to have some insight about how should you define a cohort? So, you know, a cohort is, you know, we did the ambassador program with 20 yeah. to 30. We'd like to have the rollout be 30 to 50. Should it be by division? Should it be cross-functional? Should it be by geography? Should it be cross-industry? How do you feel about the design of the cohort? Yeah, good, good question. It's a, it, it's I think a multi-part question, but um, you know, part of the value of the cohort is that you've got people that have the, you know, rich kind of foundational knowledge of supply chain, value chain, end to end, you know, we keep going. But but you've got people that, you know, the the basics are already tackled. So that now it's more of how do we apply it and how do we use it in a way with either it's your you know, your business or across businesses, across regions. I'll I'll talk a little bit about what how our experience was. But I think the real value of it is getting a group together to almost um, use it as a catalyst to, to, to think differently, to do something differently. And if that means across a region, if that means including others outside of your business, to add a little uh, spice, a little variety to, uh, to the thought, I think that's all good. The one thing I, I do think is important, though, is that everyone that comes into the cohort um, has a certain – uh, base knowledge so that instead of definitions and so forth, you're really, in, in my mind, you're really more focused on, you know, where do you want to go versus, you know, where are you at today? 
And um, in our cohort group, it was. It was across a number of different businesses within Dow. And uh, I don't remember, Laura, if it uh, – Maybe we did. Maybe we did have a couple regions in there, but um, I think it, mm-hmm. in, our, in our particular example, it was across a number of businesses. In some cases, we'd have uh, one or two people in each business, but it um, it really highlighted where we're similar, but also where we're very different. And I think that was one of the really interesting things when we started uh, getting into some of the discussions and kind of altering maybe uh, an opinion that I had or somebody else had in our cohort of uh, what another business was doing or what the right solution really was. Yeah, there were some great cross-divisional discussions. And, you know, I have a lot of discussions with people about should you use it in mergers and acquisitions to understand barriers and enablers of different groups or should you use it by region or by business. And, you know, I think that really boils down to what's your strategy. Now, we do have a question for Margaret, and she says, training's one thing, but how do you measure the value? Scott, what are your thoughts there? Uh, yep, so uh, so first part of this, I'd say, in my definition, because I, I have a, a, a pretty strong way to distinguish between education and training. So in this, in this one, um, to me, this is more of real learning, so it's more education, and the value to me, would be just like, like we talked about. I could very much see this. And, um, you know, I've been involved in the, uh, where we've been trying to do a lot of work in end-to-end uh, value chain type improvement work over the last two years at Dow. Um, so this, to me, is a great way to, to further that, <clears throat> to think differently than what we've done. But it also I could see if we would have had this early on, this would have been a wonderful way to catalyze the the group of folks that I was working with, right, to almost, um, you know, beyond a brainstorming activity, but really trying to, you know, get some outside-in knowledge and uh, then bring in our specific business knowledge. I, th- I see this as a great way to kickstart something that uh, if you were starting a new initiative around um, end-to-end or, you know, horizontal work processes or value chain. This, to me, would be terrific on that. I also see um, this as continuing education with uh, a group of folks. Maybe um, you want to spur them into uh, thinking a little bit differently of how we, you know, would normally think of supply chain. So I could see that. And I also see this as a way to solve a specific issue or problem where, Maybe, um, you know, you want to be more customer-centric, and you hear the buzzwords, but you don't know or you don't understand what that really means and what you can do in an area. I see it as a way to, to also further uh, a specific area or program that you want to go attack. And from a measurement standpoint of value, um, you know, hard dollar value, I think um, – you know, you could do this in many different ways. Um, you certainly could look at, uh, you know, some of the uh, initiatives that would come out of this, um, some of the success and metrics that you could follow around customer experience or customer satisfaction. Whatever, however, or whatever yardstick you want to use to apply that, I, I think, again, this would be a terrific way to uh, really energize a change management program within, uh, within your business or company. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Let's move to Jesse now. Now, Jesse, there's a question, and, you know, we work hand-in-hand in, hand in this about, you know, how do people take this to action? And, you know, we mine the social data, the patterns, we share the benchmark data uh, with what they get as a strategy document at the end of the catalyst and the training. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, hey, thanks, Scott. I'd really like to thank you for what you said. That's exactly what we at CorpU would describe as strategy activation. So if you are trying to come up with the next generation of supply chain at Dow and you're trying, you know that becoming a more customer-centric supply chain is your must-win idea for, for growth in the coming years, and you need to build a, an initiative to really get that kicked off, 
I think Laura's course is the, the perfect way to do that because it allows a cohort of leaders or managers or influencers in the supply chain to get together and, and drive alignment around what does it mean to be customer-centric in Dallas supply chain. And so what we at Corp U would want to do is we would want to talk to some of the stakeholders in that group and figure out, okay, what would you find valuable out of this experience? Because I think when people think of training and value, they, they try to you know, evaluate based on how many butts were in seats, right? How many people showed up? Did they do the work? And then that leaves you guessing about whether or not that actually brought any value to the business. And so what we do is we talk to stakeholders and we say, what would you find valuable if you've just gone through a merger or acquisition? Would you find it valuable to surface who's talking to each other in the platform? Are the two groups integrating well? If you need to come up with new ideas in order to become more customer-centric, we would want to surface the ideas that are coming up in the ideation tournament and put that right on the first page that people see as they log into the course platform so that it's on top of mind for everyone. Um, so that really gets to the question that Mike asked about how do you define a cohort. A cohort is a group of people that will engage in a sprint on the Corpu platform to achieve a certain goal. And then the answer to the other question about how do you assign value to that is, did it achieve the goal? Are there actionable steps that come out of this learning experience? And Laura, the thing that I, I really have to congratulate you on is your expert insight that is added into discussions and, and into the presentation that we get at the end in the live event really helps drive people there. Yeah, so you know, and it's fun to do this month. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let's so go through a day, a in, day the in the life. Yeah, a day in the CorpU platform is, uh, is pretty straightforward. I think Scott described this as kind of the, the week at a glance. It gives you what are all the activities that you're going to do today. Um, it lets you know how many you've completed, and it gives you a little estimate of, of uh, how long it should take you. So if you move to the next slide there. You know, we start, as Laura said, with a video. Uh, it's a short burst of engaging material to get people starting thinking about you know, what, what is, who is your customer if they're taking Laura's Building the Customer-Centric Supply Chain Sprint. You know, the next, uh, next activity in that day is they learn about the consumer value chain. So what are some of the changing trends we're seeing uh, in supply chain that, that really affect everybody even though not everyone's kind of seeing it yet? Later on in the day, they'll fill out an assessment that asks them, today, who do you define as the customer? Is that the correct definition of customer for your organization? And if you answered no to that question, who should we define as the customer? And so in one day where each of your participants spend 30 minutes in the platform, they get a great learning experience, and the stakeholders of the project get great insight into where their people are. So if you're in charge of leading an initiative to build a customer-centric supply chain at Dow, wouldn't it be amazing if you knew exactly where 100 of your top people were in ter terms of who they even view as the customer? The CorpU platform also features discussion sections built directly into the course, uh, the course days. So I think a lot of MOOCs and other learning platforms kind of bolt on a, a forum and they say, go, go to the forum and ask questions if you have them. But we recognize that conversation with your peers in the cohort is what gets those actionable action steps uh, documented. And so what CorpView does is we use our deep analytics tools to actually mine the unstructured data that comes out of these discussion sections, and we can tell you different things depending on what the goal of the initiative is. So if you're just announcing a change that you want to pursue, then maybe we do sentiment analysis to see whether or not people are on board with this change. If you're looking for specific themes that emerge out of conversations, we can do that as well. So again, this week at a glance, Laura has already described kind of what it feels like to move through every day, uh, 30 minutes every day. But the, the value of the CorpU platform is that at the end of that week, we have a live event where Laura gives input, and then we can turn around and deliver to any project stakeholders all of the data that we collected that Laura's benchmarks show, 
um, and pro, you know, drive towards that action step after a course, these are the next steps. So it's not just about providing an education experience for the course participants. It also gives leaders in an organization a sense of where they need to go next for their people. So Jesse, we've been deploying seven courses today and we're going to build three next year. And there are the supply chain metrics that matter, which is based upon where are industries and what are the set points, and making the digital pivot, which looks at the confluence of analytics and robotics and Internet of Things and new business models, the outside-in processes or the market-driven value network about how do we build data and streams that help people to go from the customer's customer to the supplier's supplier outside in, end-to-end -end orchestration, which is what is end-to-end -end and building the customer-centric supply chain, driving improvements in supply chain planning, which gets to governance and the definition of supply chain models, and building agility through horizontal processes. And you know, there's no one way that people stack these, but you know, depending upon the group of classes that people decide they want to do against the strategy, we build an assessment document at the end. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like? Sure. So primarily I think a lot of value comes from the benchmarking that, that you do in the course, Laura, and compare against your database of, uh, of um, responses from all sorts of industry professionals to the same question. So it gives a company a, a quick snapshot of where they stack up to the competition, but also depending on the goals that we establish for, for the company that's pursuing this initiative, uh, we can show them different things. So for example, if they're taking the building the customer-centric supply chain course, we can show them that um, you know, your people are identifying distributors instead of the end consumer as their primary customer, and here's why that might be a problem because the end consumer is really the, the person whose desires should be influencing your product and how it gets to them. And so if you're not building in ways to your supply chain to listen to that end consumer, then really you're just stuck relying on order data back in the supply chain to figure out where the market is heading. And when there are changes and disruptions in the market, order data has crazy latency, so you're not going to find out about it for a month or so. Um, so so you know, showing people where their employees are on a spectrum of customer centricity is really what that end document can provide for the building the customer-centric supply chain. And they're really fun to do and to share with companies. And depending upon what the goal is of the company or the strategy, I have some companies that have a big IT project. And so they're really looking at operational excellence or putting together the classes for end-to-end -end supply chain. So whatever the goal of the company is, it can be a different set of classes, and it's nothing cast in stone that you've got to take a set number of classes or that you've got to take a class in a certain order. People just put these together based upon where they are and what their needs are. And then what we do is you know, build classes through the years based upon next generation concepts. So in 2018, we'll build on the case studies of the supply chains to admire We'll also be talking about rethinking supply chain analytics. How do we think about Hadoop and cognitive learning and blockchain and ontologies and the network of networks work, which looks at how do we redefine B2B. And then in the summer of next year, we'll release a sales and operations planning simulation, which will allow people to actually connect sales and operations planning to the metrics that matter and actually use game theory to be able to leverage new learnings in sales and operations planning. Now we have a couple of options. <clears throat> One is people can just do strategy activation with Corpio. So maybe this is they want to roll their own and maybe Dow has a special program or Procter & Gamble has a special program. CorpU platform is a wonderful platform if you've got strategy activation that the CorpU team can help you to build online catalysts to help really activate your own strategy. 
The second thing is you can form internal cohorts, as Scott was talking about, to really leverage people to get together and to learn based upon what the goals are and then to ideate and take the next generation supply chain to the next level. The other thing that we're releasing today and we will start in January is a cross-industry program that we call the Next Generation Supply Chain Planning Academy, which is a two-year pace learning that's cross-industry. So the goal here is that it will have people from multiple companies, only three people per company though, so it can be one to three, so we don't want to have a class of all Dow, even though I love Dow, or all BASF or all Procter & Gamble. But it's designed for cross-industry, and we actually did this with an internal networking group that I have, and people found amazing ways to collaborate. You know, one consumer packaged goods company was able to establish new business relationships with a retailer in a really meaningful way. And then we also have a face-to-face -face session in Philadelphia if you want to come and learn face-to-face, -face, and then we'll actually have the cohorts there or the training there so that you can see it face-to-face. -face. And when we think about this Next Generation program, <clears throat> you know, you think about your internal cohort, I think about it like a sandwich. You can have your strategy activation. So I have one company that is working on their internal program, and they've got, you know, what is this IT project about? What do they want to accomplish? And then they've picked from the catalyst that I've built, so they've picked planning and horizontal processes and end-to-end -end because it's a supply chain planning process. And then at the end what they do is they set up the goals with CorePU so the structured data and the unstructured data can be mined along with the benchmarkings and they can get some idea about where they're going, what are the barriers, and what are the drivers. Now on the next generation uh, supply chain academy, we're going to have two cohorts a year with a maximum of 50 participants. So my thought is to do one in Europe and one in North America. You sign up for January. It's $2,500 a person. And that's really shared learning within the cohort and shared learning across cohorts. Each company can register one to three attendees. And at the end, people will get a certification and a digital image that they can put on their LinkedIn profile. And then we'll have optional face-to-face -face networking of the cohort members in a private reception at the annual Imagine conference. So Scott, what do you think? Well, as you can tell, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, uh, again, I really think this is something that's incredibly innovative. I've never seen anything quite like this before. And I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of different ways to engage, different, you know, you don't have to start in course one. You can go to course three and, you know, maybe the, the business or company that's interested in this uh, has a very specific need, and certainly at Dow we do. So you know the whole end-to-end -end effort. This, uh, this this maps very well to it. You know, one of the things that um, to me that's really a standout on this is just that um, you know you you take the education, it helps stimulate the thought, and then. Um, through some really, I think uh, somebody, I don't know if it was you, Laura, or combination with Jesse or others, but um, the, the, the way the questions are asked to help facilitate the discussion, which by the way, for the rest of the folks on the phone, you see all of the commentary in the, uh, in the forum, right? So you're asked a very specific question, and then people comment to it. So it's almost like, uh, uh, I guess initially it's more like forced collaboration, but it's incredibly effective to get provocative ideas out. And then, you know, now to me is where the learning really begins because now it's not just the stuff that's on the script, but it's also, you know, okay, let's really bring this to life with issues that we're facing today. That, to me, was really the interesting part with this. And then by the time you reach the end of the, uh, the four or five days, um, you know, it's, uh, 
it becomes even more open and um, um, really, you know, some interesting ideas that uh, you certainly wouldn't come up with on your own. So that's the part that I really, uh, I really uh, enjoyed, and and also as part of that whole cohort cohort piece that we talked through. Well, thank you, Scott, and thank you, Jesse. And if people are interested in learning more about the program, here are our email details. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, we want to make this affordable, engaging, and accessible, and drive actionable results that can help you get started today. You know, the next generation of supply chain will look quite different than the one today, and we want to be the catalyst to help everyone. Allison, are there any other questions for us? I don't think so, Laura, so I think we can wrap up. If there are any other questions and we um, close down the presentation before someone is able to send them, you can see Laura and Regina's email addresses here. So please do reach out to them with any questions you may have about the program because we would like to help you get the most out of this, uh, this investment. Um, with that said, a few things to wrap up. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we have recorded this webinar and we will send out the link to the recording and the slides, the deck to everyone who registered today. So keep an eye out for that uh, in your inbox tomorrow. And again, we encourage you to engage with us on social media. You can follow us on our Twitter handle at SCI Insights LLC, um, and we do uh, post things there, as well as on our LinkedIn company page. Uh, and you can also follow us on SlideShare, uh, slideshare.net backslash Laura Ciceri. So again, thanks everyone for your time, and we look forward to working with you on transforming your supply chain. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Allison. <laughs>